<sighs> What's going on everyone? My name is Andrew. Welcome back to a brand new exciting video. Here we are. It's the new office. Office in parentheses. <laughs> hey Saki, what do you think of the new office, man? What do you think? Saki probably hates it because he hates everything. No, but seriously, today we've got an exciting video because we are doing editing your videos three. I've done three videos now, which is kind of crazy to think. The series is ever expanding. You guys seem to really like it. I really enjoy it. And it's just a good time overall. Thank you guys so much to everyone who sent in footage. And I do just want to say, I only choose five people every time I film one of these videos, which kind of stinks because I can't really edit all of your guys' footage. And I don't want you to feel like you're left out. The only factor in me choosing which footage to use is whether or not I can have an idea of how to edit that footage. So if I gave you an impression I was gonna use your footage and I didn't or something like that, I'm sorry, please forgive me. Also, one more thing, I am gonna be doing a big giveaway at the end of this video. Companies like CUK USA, where I got my computer from, and Editor's Keys, where I've got my keyboard and my microphone from. They gave me some goodies to give away to you guys, so stay tuned to the end of this video to see if you're eligible to potentially sign up and try to win one of these goodies. That being said, guys, let's hop on the computer and start talking about these effects. All right, so this first shot came in courtesy of Michael Kurdetsky. Thank you so much, Michael, for sending in this footage. And he also mentioned in his email that his YouTube channel is also his name, Michael Kurdetsky. But okay, so this time we did something a little bit different for these clips. He actually ended up sending me two different shots. He might have sent me more. I definitely used two different shots. He sent me this really nice drone shot, and then he also sent me this cool clip of him or his friend, I don't know who, walking along the edge of this water. So at first I messed around with maybe just doing some tracking on the drone shot, tracking some text or something like that, and then calling it a day. But eventually I looked at these two shots and I was like, hmm, I feel like, I feel like there's something here. I feel like I could actually probably link these two shots together. So we actually ended up doing a bit of a transition, which is pretty exciting. So what I essentially wanted to do is I wanted to start off, originally I wanted to start off on the drone shot and then key out the sky on the second clip of him walking and have sort of, and to have sort of that foreground of him walking with the trees sort of like luma fade on or quickly just come on into the frame. The idea was very similar to an effect used in Sam Coulter and Taylor Cut Films' Film Jungle. One of the first First shots is this shot of like a silhouette of them on a car and then there's a light leak and the car goes away but the background is the same it's a drone shot so this effect was heavily inspired by that so I started off just working on keying out this second clip of uh, of him walking now this was actually a bit more challenging than I realized just because of how much of a gradient there is in the sky it's not all blue it's not like a blue screen some of its white some of its blue there's darker lighter shades so that just makes it tricky when trying to key out the other thing that we were we're working with is trees and trees are always always just a pain to key out that's just how they work so it was already a little bit tricky I started off by doing this garbage mask along the bottom and then I went ahead and started messing around with key light trying to key out the sky I think I used I used a luma key as well and then I also used two of the best effects inside of Adobe After Effects and no one will tell me differently I used the key cleaner effect and the refine hard matte effect as well. And those are just like the best effects for keen or anything like that. I didn't know about them for a long time and they're just really useful for cleaning up edges of keys. Cause sometimes just using the Luma key or the key light, it's just not that, it's just not that nice on the sides. You just don't get that nice look and you can customize them if you want, but they're pretty much just drag and drop effects, which is amazing. So those are the main effects that I used. I was sort of just garbage masking out things that I could and then using key light and a mixture of things like that. I ended up having actually go into mocha if you look at the edge of his like head you can see there's this light on the side of it and when I was keying out that got keyed out as well it was really hard for me to bring back I couldn't bring it back with keen so I went into mocha and just tracked the side of his head out just made a little mask and then brought that back into after effects created a matte layer and then used the alpha channel and there we go that was pretty much it now you will notice that the side of the trees I didn't key out all of the white now here's the nice thing about that because I was putting this on a drone shot that had sort of bright lights in the sky, you couldn't notice. Even though there was different colors and stuff like that, and they were shot on different cameras, at least I think, you could not notice the white of the trees. So that worked out really nicely. So now I brought it back into my main composition and here's where it started to get a little bit more tricky. Essentially what I needed to do is track this drone shot sky to the movement of the pan of the walking shot, if that makes sense. The reason why I got tricky is because, because I needed to essentially scale into the drone shot. Now at first I tried to bring it into Photoshop and tried to extend the edges of the drone shot. So I used like the clone stamp tool and everything like that. But the issue is, 
is, is that the water was moving. And obviously it still couldn't work for that. I needed to have the water moving. So the other thing I tried out was the motion tile. But the issue with that was that it looked unnatural because the water was kind of going at a V. It was super obvious that it was just a motion tile and I didn't like that. Now what I could have done is I could have just cropped in and I tried that for a bit. But the issue was is it lost so much of the quality of the drone shot. It made it look like literal garbage by scaling in. So I had to think of an alternative way. So what I ended up doing is I did use a motion tile to extend the edges of it. I ended up using a little bit of puppet warp to try to make the sky look more natural because a lot of times you get these like weird V's in when you're using motion tile. And then the other trick that I used is I ended up adding this white gradient on the side. And what I was trying to do with that is essentially just block out where the motion tile started. I always talk about it. I'm going to talk about it again. Editing is like a magic trick. You're trying to use smoke and mirrors to cover up your loose ends. Gradients and things like that are sort of the smoke and mirrors of editors. And I was using that gradient to cover up some of my sort of mistakes, if you will. Now, the nice thing about it was this light on the side of him actually worked well with the gradient. So there wasn't much of an issue there. After that, I ended up, you know, adding in this flare and then I ended up adding a luma fade to him and I just luma keyed him out a little bit for the last few frames and then it fades off and we're onto the drone shot. So this was actually a pretty detailed edit. I try to go over as much as I can. I don't want to keep you guys here forever, but that's essentially what I did. I think it was a fun effect. It was a pretty cool transition. So this is the before and this is the after. So thank you, Michael, so much for sending me these shots. Be sure to check them out on YouTube if you guys want. And I think that's about it. So let's move on to the next shot. All right, so this next shot is coming in courtesy of Naman. He said that he's been following my channel since January 2018. Thank you so much. That is amazing. And he actually sent in a whole bunch of footage for me to mess around with. Bunch of cool footage. But the one I ended up going with was this just super cinematic. I mean, this is like peak cinematic shot of some boats on the water with the sun setting behind them. I thought it was beautiful and it didn't need too many effects. So I just did a few little quick tweaks. Started off in Premiere, obviously, and then eventually brought it into After Effects. I tracked the background of the trees, and then I actually went to videoblocks.com and got some stock footage of some birds flying across the sky. I brought those into After Effects, keyed them out, but the interesting thing was it was a little bit tricky because the actual footage of the birds was moving, it was panning along with them, and I needed it to be stationary. So I ended up actually not using the position track, and I just sort of keyframed them just going across the sky. I ended up adding the colorista effect to do my color grading and really I did just some simple grading because the colors were already super nice in this shot. Pretty much all I did is I just went down to the tone curve and brought down some of those midtones and shadows. And then I also ended up adding in a light flare to sort of accentuate the sky. I did this with the optical flares pack from videocopilot.com. It took me a long time actually to like come up with a flare that just felt right for the shot. I didn't want the flare to be like center stage. I didn't want the attention to be on the flare. I wanted it to be on the people. I just wanted to dramatize it a bit. So I messed around with a whole bunch of different options, but ended up landing on the sort of star burst kind of look with a little bit of a flare going to the side but nothing too much after that I ended up adding a vignette to just sort of just bring the attention towards the center of the frame and then just for fun I added in Naman's name right into the center and I just I thought it looked kind of like I don't know like the opening credits to a film or something like that it just had the right feel for me but yeah I thought it just looked nice and then I changed the blending mode of that text to overlay so the text kind of blended in seamlessly overall this is the before and this is the after after. Yeah, it was just a fun clip to mess around with. There's really no rhyme or reason why I did the things that I did. I just thought it looked nice. And yeah, that was about it. So thank you so much, Naman, for sending in all your footage. Really, really appreciate it. All right, so the next clip is coming in from Pure. I don't know how to pronounce your name. I'm so sorry. But he said he was in Tokyo right now. He got loads of sick footage and he sent me some highlights. He also said that his Insta and future YouTube is P-Y-R-Y-P-T-K. So definitely check him out. I ended up landing on these two different shots, one of this train and one of these people walking in the streets. I was super excited just to mess around with these shots and see what I could do. So I started off with this train shot and the first thing I knew I wanted to do was add in some optical flares. That was like the obvious thing. So same thing as always, I made a solid layer, named it flare, added the optical flares effect. I always just mess around with some presets and things like that to find the right flare. Ended up going with this subtle sort of anamorphic flare and then manually track them onto these lights on the train. I ended up doing two of those flares, just tracking them along 
one. They were subtle, nothing too crazy, but I think it just helped to bring out the effect a bit more. I also added one in the top right corner, just to add a little bit more anamorphic flares. You can never have too many of those, but once again, try to keep it subtle. I added an adjustment layer, used Colorista, and I actually used a custom LUT that I've made called Frozen. It just brings out some blue tones. Definitely does not work for every single shot, but sometimes you get kind of lucky, and I actually did get lucky with these shots. So it worked out nicely. I added in some blue tones. And then the other thing that I did is I added on this Rain MOV file from lensdistortions.com, I think. I got it in a pack from there. I brought down the opacity of the rain to 14% just because I wanted it to be super subtle, but the roads and everything were already wet, so it looked pretty natural. Now, the next thing is I have this other footage of these people walking in the street, and I wanted to link these two shots together somehow. I wasn't quite sure what I was gonna do, but I ended up just masking out one of these pedestrians walking across the street. I scaled him up, blurred him out, and then I use it sort of as like a frame blocking type transition of him walking across the frame and we cut into the next clip. And then the last thing that I did that I was really stoked on was I actually added a time warp effect to these videos and time warp essentially allows you to add in artificially frames to your videos to slow them down. So there's sort of this moment, this beat, where everyone in the street stops, and I think the train stops as well, and then it speeds back up and goes along with the flow. Thought it looked really sick. I've done a whole tutorial on Time Warp before. If you guys wanna check that out, I'll link it down below. So this is the before, and this is the after. Thank you so much for sending it in. I wanna to go to Tokyo so bad someday, explore Japan, it would be so, so cool. That's definitely on my bucket list. But once again, thank you so much for sending in this footage. All right, so moving along, we are flying through these, my friends. The next one is kinda of like, I didn't, I didn't really kill it. I'm not gonna lie, I didn't kill it, but I thought I'd throw it in here. It's not my best work, but I did the best that I could. So the email was called My First Hyperlapse, and this clip is coming from someone named Adam. I think he is Swedish, but the clip is just called My First Hyperlapse. This hyperlapse is way better than My First Hyperlapse, just for the record. My First Hyperlapse, like, I didn't even know what I was doing, so great job on that, Adam. But I did my best to try to stabilize it in After Effects, so I brought this clip of, it looks like this church, I brought it into After Effects, and the first thing I always try with hyperlapses is I just use warp stabilizer and it's kind of like cross your fingers let's see if this works and shocker it didn't work so I deleted that and it was time to do it manually so I went over to my tracker panel hit stabilize motion and if you guys don't know I think I do have a tutorial on this but you can essentially do manual stabilization for your videos so I went ahead and I was manually tracking the position of the church I was tracking some rotation for it going through tracking and then I apply it you know edit apply apply X and Y, and then here's the first result that we're getting. You can see we got a little bit of that position shake going away. I went ahead and did it for the rotation. You use two tracking points, and I tracked on through. It wasn't going great. I tried watching some tutorials to see if there's something I was doing wrong. It seemed like it was just not gonna work out. After a few different attempts and a few different tweaks, I realized that the main thing that I was struggling to stabilize was this foreground. I could stabilize the background a lot, but the foreground was just moving a good amount, and there wasn't a whole lot I could do about that. Overall, I wanna say that this clip did turn out pretty sick. Not my best work. I'm sure some people could do it a lot better than I can, but I did my best. So here is the before and here is the after. Thank you so much, Adam, for sending in this clip. Really, really appreciate it. Such a good first Hyperlapse fan. Keep doing them. Like I said, way better than my first Hyperlapse, so definitely keep it up, dude. You're killing it. All right, so this final clip is coming from Ivan. Thank you so much, Ivan, for sending this in. In his email, I said it was shot with a GoPro. He also linked his YouTube channel. You guys can check it out down below. I'll link it in the description. Now, what this is, is a shot with a GoPro of a fish swimming underneath the water. Thought it looked pretty sick, and I just wanted to see what I could do with a shot like this. Brought it into After Effects, because that's the only program I know. <laughs> practically. And I started just messing around with a few different adjustment layers for the color grading. I knew I wanted just to just add in some blues. That was like the main thing. I just wanted to add some blue into the shot. So I started messing around a lot with Colorista, trying to get it just to look right, but still look natural. It was a bit of a process, but I eventually landed on a grade that I was pretty okay with. The next thing I wanted to do is add in some depth of the field. Now, the thing with GoPros is they sort of just have everything in focus. Their aperture is pretty high, so there's really no depth of field, and I wanted to change that. So I went ahead and took some of this reef sort of coral, or whatever it is, I don't even know, and I masked it out, 
blew it up, blurred it, and tried to make it look kind of natural on the side of the frames. I sort of framed the fish in like a sort of a vignette of these foreground elements. And this is one of my favorite things to do. It's so, so easy just to add in fake foreground elements like that. And I think it makes it look a lot better. It just adds in that depth of the field. I messed around with a lot of like bubble stock footage that I got off of video blocks. Couldn't quite get anything that I was loving until I found this floating particles footage. I went ahead and brought that into After Effects and then changed the blend mode to screen. And essentially it was just adding some more particles to be going across the frame, adding some bokeh essentially. Nothing too intense. Like those things are all about like refraining, like holding back a bit because if it comes on too strong, it ends up just looking cheap. Really, you just don't want people to notice it, just kind of notice it subconsciously. So I added in some of those particles swimming along. The fish comes into frame. He looks at the frame and then he slowly moves out. And that was pretty much it. So here is the before and here is the after. All right, and there you guys have it. That is it for editing your videos three. Thank you guys so much from the bottom of my heart for sending in your footage. And if you guys want to see another one, let me know down in the comments below. But right now, don't click out of this video because it's time to do a little bit of a giveaway. But unfortunately, one of the requirements for this giveaway is that you guys are located in the US. I know that really does stink and I'm really, really sorry about that. I know that the majority of my audience is not in the US. I know I have a bunch of you guys in Indonesia and India and the UK. Uh, shout out to all of you guys. You are the best. But actually, if you guys remember from the drone giveaway everyone was able to submit to that one but the person that was randomly chosen by the computer was overseas and I shipped it out but the shipping ended up being like really expensive like I'm not even joking like no joke took a chunk out of my wallet so unfortunately because there's so many different prizes and I'd have to ship them out to all of you guys it would be super expensive so I just can't do that but that being said for those of you guys who can compete we have a whole bunch of prizes I'll just go through them really quickly these first ones are coming from CUK USA once again CUK USA are the people who I got my computer from. I love CUK USA. I link them in the description of all of my videos. Definitely check them out. But they're providing us with some MSI gaming headphones. We also have this precision gaming mouse, so super useful for editing. CUK gave me two of these massive mouse pads for your videos. They gave me two of those, so we're giving two of these away. And then the last thing from CUK is another mouse. And then the next thing I'm giving away is five of these editing keys keyboard covers. These are keyboard covers for Apple keyboards, Apple Magic keyboards. They're all specifically made for the 13 to 15 inch with touch bar MacBook Pros late 2016 models. There'll be more information down below if you wanna see if you have a computer that could work with these. But essentially they are designed for Adobe Premiere Pro. They have all the keyboard shortcuts on them. I have a version of it. I have their actual editing keyboard keyboard. But yeah, super, super sick. So if you guys wanna win any of these products, then check the description down below. Super easy to enter. Anyways guys, we just covered a lot. I've been talking a lot because my throat. <sighs> It's starting to seize up a bit. Thank you guys so much for watching this video. I really do hope you guys enjoyed it. If you did enjoy it, give it a thumbs up, subscribe down below, turn on post notifications. You guys are the best. I appreciate each and every one of you guys so much. Get outside, film a video, make a difference, and I'll see you guys in the next one. Peace.